standard file system is basically an HDFS file system, so it can uh, you can just uh, replace your standard uh, HDFS file system uh, with your Cassandra file system. You can change your config in your your Hadoop configs and expose uh, Cassandra's file system as an HDFS. Uh, so you can just get rid of the name node, secondary name node, uh, and uh, data node demons. Uh, those can just go away and uh, Cassandra will take care of that. So it becomes very, very um, uh, transparently uh, can take over the HDFS role. Uh, if you are exposing Cassandra file system as a Hadoop file system, the people on the Hadoop background who do not know Cassandra at all um, need not be concerned because they are interacting with the HDFS API. The HDFS standard API functions would be applied for, to the Cassandra file system it internally takes care of uh, how to talk to uh, which aspect of the Cassandra file system. So um, th that's the ease part of that. So again, it uh, removes uh, uh, many pain points that they exist in the Hadoop architecture, namely the single point of failure. So uh, though there are some advanced concepts today in Hadoop to handle the, the single point of failure, but going for a, a Cassandra file system uh, just gets rid of this thing. So it, uh, is horizontally scalable and you don't have the single point of failure. Um, so uh, it also gives you very tight integration uh, that way. So uh, your processing and your data are co-local, so processing is, is faster. And then you could uh, alternately also dump your output back into Cassandra. So for handling big files like, like the Hadoop thing, Cassandra file system can uh, also be exposed to do that. So it, ex it basically exposes uh, it's its own file system in terms of a bigger chunk of blocks, so it's very similar to the uh, the Hadoop system. So Hadoop finds it very easy to process that kind of information. So if you look at the diagram here, uh, all this uh, inode information keeps uh, information about the blocks and sub blocks, and these are basically compressed. So if your file uh, .txt is there, it's basically in, in, uh, has an inode and then it has subsequent blocks and sub sub blocks uh, there. So in, in terms of column family, you, can, you have basically have a, a, have a block one, then you have a U, UID, and then you keep all the sub block information saved as a column family. So if you are probably going to save uh, things in, in a Hadoop system, it is going to save per block. In, in a uh, Cassandra thing, it's going to create a column family and keep all this uh, block information uh, based on the block ID. So for every block, it will might create uh, just a unique ID and then save uh, all the sub blocks as part of uh, uh, columns uh, as part of that column family. And then it keeps all this metadata information of where which block is saved um, in in terms of its uh, own uh, another column family. So it can keep all this metadata in some other column family and it keeps this data in some other column family. That is the way um, Cassandra file system can be exposed as an HDFS file system. Very, very interesting use case um, um, to uh, tightly integrate Cassandra with Hadoop. So if there is a company which are using both these technologies, um, then it's very highly recommended that they use the or they replace the HDFS with the Cassandra file system because of the advantages that it, produ uh, it provides for processing. Okay, before I move on, let me see if there are any questions. Okay, so Asit is asking, can uh, we use Pig and Hive on Cassandra directly? Um, frankly or honestly, I haven't tried this on, so I'm not sure if you can uh, execute Pig and Hive on Cassandra directly, uh, though I know that uh, Pig has some capabilities. And also Hive, there, there was some effort about you know, using Hive directly on Cassandra. I'm not sure if you could do that. Um, uh, I might have to check on that. I might get back to you uh, next week to uh, really say that it, it can be used directly on Cassandra. Um, we just saw the, the various uh, aspects of integration, like the standalone integration, the hybrid integration, and a very all in all, um, the tight coupling between the Hadoop and Cassandra file system. So um, here are certainly uh, some characteristics of the Cassandra file system uh, uh, we need to review uh, when we are comparing with the HDFS. It can be ex exposed as an HDFS. So what are the advantages to use uh, the Cassandra file system? One is that uh, you can use uh, is the Cassandra file system is decentralized. It has no single point of failure. 
Secondly, it's, it, it has a, a replication uh, facility. Very similar to the HDFS, uh, you can have replication in, in, in Cassandra. And, um, and it, this is the Cassandra file system is, a, is an HDFS compatible system. But there's also another uh, important thing that you can do uh, by using the Cassandra file system is you can use indexing. Uh, your data um, being indexed in, in, a, in a HDFS file system is, is very difficult because uh, your things are distributed on blocks. But in a Cassandra file system, you can certainly use uh, your information. Um, you can have your uh, information indexed. So this provides a very uh, unique advantage. If you want to take uh, advantage of this, you can have your uh, things indexed in Cassandra file system. And then you can use the power of Hadoop to uh, quickly traverse uh, data and uh, do smart scanning instead of scanning over all your data and then finding out uh, respective information. So these are certain uh, kind of uh, importance or important aspects on the Cassandra file system uh, to be used if you want to integrate it uh, 